everyone that it's friday and it's really symbolic that we're doing this with you on a friday because friday is my day for the movies absolutely and and my you know in another life um i would be this morning in a movie hall i would have you know written and uh, be busy filing a review now actually i i'm still doing the same i've taken this break uh, to do the insta live but i'm still doing the same because a new film has dropped on netflix so now i've moved i'm i'm reviewing digital content and i'm avidly following your daily reviews it's it's like my daily coffee before i drink thank my coffee you. i go on and check your reviews thank Fabulous, you for the recommendation so thank you for keeping that alive through and keeping us alive through this lockdown period thank you okay guys i'm going to do a little one minute formal introduction i know she needs no introduction i know you guys are all here to hear from her um but i'm compelled to do an introduction so thank you anupama chopra for joining us She is uh, India's foremost film critic, a television anchor. She's also been a director. She is a director of the Mami Film Festival, and she has authored a bunch of books. She also has authored articles for the New York Times, etc. And she's also founder and editor of Film Companion. Um, on a personal note, I've got a I've got the pleasure of having to know her over the last two years or so. I would say, and the three words that come to my mind about you is absolutely warm, absolutely <laughs> huggable. And really, really gracious. Like you really dispel any notions one might have of anyone coming from the film industry for sure. It's been Thank an absolute you. delight knowing you, and I hope I get the pleasure of continuing to know you forever. Thank so, you. Of course, of course, Viba. I just don't know. I hope we can hug soon again. Now, I'm sure it's going to happen very soon. <laughs> okay. So without much ado, first question. Since you know, I'm I'm from Reach IV, guys. I run an organization called ReachIV.com, and I help. Uh, students figure out their study abroad and career aspirations so my first question today is obviously education related i know you did your undergraduate here in india and then you went to northwestern to do a degree in journalism how did your education influence your career you know what are some of the sort of finite takeaways from there you know um honestly it it didn't influence my choice of career because i did the masters degree in journalism because i knew i wanted to be a film journalist it was never a journalist it was always film journalism uh, but what it did for me was was give me a foundation uh, that has served me for the last 25 years uh, uh, you know i i have everything i learned it was a one year's masters degree at that time and um, it just set your basics in place you know a respect for facts a respect for uh, integrity uh, a respect for having a separation between church and state you know advertising and editorial those are all very contentious things now and it's all very muddled you know half the time you don't know whether you're reading advertorial or editorial uh, but what they taught me at northwestern was sort of just the basic principles of how to be a strong journalist how to cultivate and nurture your own voice and that for me was irreplaceable i i don't think i would be half the journalist i am if i had not done that degree okay yeah you definitely have a voice and i hear that voice uh, every day and you know in, in every one of your reviews it's a very distinct voice so thank you for keeping that voice for all of us um a little bit about your career as a film critic how did that come along you know you come from this family of writers filmmakers you're married to one and you know you didn't go down the film direction route but you went into film criticism how did that happen for you you know it was actually not um uh, again a thought out thing so so film journalism was the thought out thing i knew i wanted to do that i knew i wanted to learn how to be a a better journalist than i was um but the the criticism happened as a natural evolution of being a bollywood journalist so i was in the trenches i was reporting i worked for india today magazine for almost 12 years uh, it started out as a bi-monthly but then it became a weekly i mean week on week you're reporting on the film industry and honestly at that time 
you know, not a lot of people wanted to write about the movies. It seems unimaginable now because we're so consumed and saturated with film coverage. But at that time, you know, it wasn't such a common thing. And they were like, Acha Chalo, she's doing it. You, you review the film also. You know, it was not, uh, it wasn't anything that really was thought through. Uh, though, though when I started to do uh, film uh, reviews, I, I then went to the FTIR for a month, one month course in film appreciation. Uh, and I still, it's, it's one of my regrets that I didn't actually do film studies and kind of learn to look at movies as a language, you know, learn the sort of uh, the language and semiotics of film. Uh, I wish I, I feel that's a gap. And I'm, I'm, Right now, I'm looking at all sorts of online courses and trying to see if I can still do that because I, I, I want to learn how to be a better film critic. Uh, but basically, it just evolved as a natural segue from being a film journalist. Okay, so you still want to learn the art that all of us want to learn from you. That's very interesting. <laughs> okay, tell us, tell us what you look at when you look at a film. Tell us what you look at. I mean, I've, obviously, I've been reading a lot of your reviews. I watch your videos. But what, if you had to look at like three things that make or break a film, what would those three things be? You know, for me, uh, so I've grown up on Hindi cinema. That was, uh, the that was, you know, we watched Hollywood films because I was, you know, a South Bombay snob. So uh, we would watch a lot of Hollywood films in like, uh, you know, Eros and Sterling and those theaters in, in South Mumbai. Uh, and of course, Hindi cinema. So, so it was very um, plot driven. Uh, so I'm not very good with um, non-linear -lin narratives. I'm not very good with abstract movies because I just find that I don't have the patience and I have to cultivate that because I want like, in a Hindi movie, it's like, ye hua, phir ye hua, phir ye hua. you know, that's how. So for me, honestly, it's the script and the characters that make or break a film. Um, and And then it's the treatment. So you can have a film where there really isn't much plot. I mean, look at Ram Gopal Verma's Rangila. Uh, what is the plot? Nothing. You know, they are friends, then she does a movie, then she becomes a heroine. And, you know, there's possible triangle, but it's all very treatment oriented as opposed to plot oriented. But for me, plot and character are the two things that uh, that can make or break a film. So plot and character, two things. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to read out one message. We have someone called Shoei from Pakistan who's sending you lots of love from Pakistan and asks when you're coming there. We have someone from New Zealand who says lots of love from New Zealand, ma'am. Uh, I'll take a question from Dhar Rukar who says, tell us something about your relationship with your sister, Tanuja. Well, you know, it's, it's, uh, we've, we're very close uh, in age. There's just, you know, a, a year and a half difference between us. So, uh, we and until I got married, we shared the same room when we so she went to study filmmaking at Temple University in Philadelphia. I graduated from Northwestern, then went to live with her in Philadelphia and did this crazy commute from Philadelphia to New York every day because I worked in New York, but we wanted to live together. So, wow. so it's it's kind of insane. But, um, you know, but I, I think we're personally close but professionally very apart because I can't of course I don't review any films made by anybody in my family that is that would be a conflict of interest but still I think professionally it's very important to kind of keep uh, the optics should always be that there is a separation between family so so for example um I'm the festival director at, at the Mumbai Film Festival right now. Uh, you know, uh, we've started to do something called a uh, 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 year-round program at home, uh, which is all driven by Smriti Kiran, who's the artistic director. They're showing Tanuja's documentary, um, which is just a lovely, lovely documentary about my two very old boas who live in a little village in UP. Now, I would love to tweet about it, but I shouldn't tweet about it because it might look like I'm promoting my family. So, you know, these are the things that I'm very mindful of. And, you know, I wear too many hats. So in inevitably some wires cross, but as much as possible, Tanu and I try to keep the wires uncrossed. Okay. And I think you've been, I think you've been really diligent about this and it, you know, the honesty and integrity definitely reflects in your reviews. Uh, Going to take a question from, let's see, so many questions. Let's do this from Casey Kashvi. Who is your favorite Indian and international film director? Um, so, you know, it's hard to say, uh, like, there's one director who, who, uh, whose cinema I love. But uh, 
there's so many contemporary directors whose films i really look forward to uh, you know uh, dibakar panaji or vishal bharadwaj um, all all these people and you know i'm honestly i'm not a snob uh, people think if you're a film critic you know or oh, you'd only like a certain kind of cinema not at all i i would be first in line whenever suryavanshi releases i want to see what rohit shetty's done with that cop universe it's fascinating i'll be first in line when 83 releases you know uh, so it isn't like i have a favorite internationally i i love the work of ang lee um he's just he's just um, such a such a sophisticated storyteller but but i don't uh, my uh, my endeavor as a film critic is to be equally pumped about all films because you should never enter a theater with an attitude of ah I, you know what is this movie going to be or you know i'm bored already or just to be cynical or to be uh, or to look down to be condescending those cannot be things you bring into a film you know finally no matter how bad a film is somebody worked at least for a year on it and it's it's a lot of physical labor so i try and go in completely open and not have favorites yeah, so in a way it's good that you come from this background because you actually understand and appreciate the labor of love and yeah. making every movie entails you know absolutely absolutely okay a question from tanvi ji how can one start with movie reviewing at their own levels like how do you even just start out reviewing a film you know i'll tell you it's amazing like when we started um you desperately tried to get hired by somebody right but now thanks to the internet everyone's got a platform everyone can start blogging and uh, uh, honestly i'll tell you the only thing that works is just to do it watch movies write about movies and i try to do that um uh, you know the i feel i feel that in the last couple of years so i i became the director of the mommy film festival uh, 5 years ago and i feel like i got so consumed by uh, running that by kind of uh, helping my so i also ed, i'm the editor of a platform called film companion you know kind of putting mommy on its up on its feet putting film companion up on its feet that i lost what i do which is look at movies and talk about movies and so now i i really am kind of uh, trying to be i wish i was more disciplined but i'm really trying to be about writing 5 600 words a day you just have to do it and now you just start a blog just start doing it start reviewing and you know that will help you cultivate your voice and figure out what you like and what you don't like okay tanvi i hope that answered your question I have lots of people saying very good stuff about film companion so I'm just going to switch gears to film companion now. Um so what was your plan for film companion when you started it and how, you know did that plan sort of pan out and what's you know what's coming up people are asking about your Smoith Gopias uh, he's enrolled himself in your film companion film critic online sessions he wants to know nice. how you will help him. Okay awesome. Nice. Uh, so so you know so so the plan for film companion was really to create a platform um, which talks about film and entertainment in a way that's engaging in a way that's entertaining in a way that has um, that has sort of editorial integrity for me that was very important and i keep hearing and i still hear that oh uh, you know uh, you guys are biased the paid reviews this that and the other so as much as possible we want to create a place that is free of all of that and to play, create a place where you come if you like tamil cinema you come if you like art house cinema that movie is showing you know so it's it's a platform where there's something for everyone and i think to some extent where we're going to be 6 years old in july um we have managed to create it we have a very very south, uh, strong south component which is led by bharadwaj rangan who's a national award winning film critic uh, we you know what i love is the mix of high and low so we can have a story about uh, the biggest masala film that you can imagine but we'll also have a story right now there's a story on the website about how sound recorders are recording the silence of cities right now you know wow. what what are they doing so it's the stuff that people who love movies who love entertainment who love the craft would be interested in but perhaps wouldn't have a place to read it because like nobody's doing stories like this anymore okay um Could you talk a little bit about monetization of Film Companion? I have a question here from Stella saying, "How does a film critic make money?" It's tough. <laughs> Let me tell you, <laughs> there is there is no, um, and you know what? It's just it's gotten tougher. This uh, I I don't know when we come out at the other end of this. 
um, what the world is going to look like, what the market is going to look like. It's been it's been an uphill climb. Um, so we uh, our monetization comes from uh, our YouTube channel. Film Papanian has a YouTube channel which has over a million subs, and we have more. Than, we have like seventeen hundred videos on it. So there's a continuing monetization happening. Um, we monetize by doing branded content. Uh, so you know, I did uh, shows for Microsoft. I've done shows for LinkedIn. So we work with brands. Uh, we work with. Um, uh mubi is a, is a advertiser on film companion so it's it's things like that and thankfully uh, um last year we started to kind of break even um and so we were just getting into that thing of yeah we we are doing this now but i i don't know honestly like all startups um it's it's a it's a challenging world out there but you know we we just have to keep going that's all we can do and and you've done shows with netflix and amazon and stuff right so No, that's, that's no, we thing. haven't. We haven't. We've done a, well. We've done a show with Audible, uh, the Amazon, which is part of Amazon, but we haven't done a show with Netflix yet. But we did. We were commissioned a show by YouTube, uh, which was lovely. It's called Off the Page, and it's basically the cast of uh, Munna Bhai, Lagera you know, Munna Bhai, reading the script and a conversation yeah. about how the film was made. I have a question here from Shiv Karthik, who says, first of all, I want to say that you're a legend." <laughs> and his question is how do i believe that my opinion and what i've got to say is worthy of the reader's time you know um agreed that's a, and that's a existential question that i often ask like you know everybody has a platform now everybody has an opinion so why does it matter what i have to say so yeah. the only way you can make it worth a reader's time is by adding more um uh, you've got a value add to a person's experience so you you and i don't have to agree on a review right you may have loved the film i may have hated it but what i should endeavor to do is that by reading my review you might get another perspective on it you might notice something you didn't notice before and that's the only way i can enhance your movie going experience so you have to bring to that review enough information enough references you have to read enough you have to watch enough that's the only way otherwise go on twitter and say you know in whatever 260 characters you put down what what you feel otherwise you you can't demand people's time you can only ask for it is if you are adding to their experience okay so you if you have an alternate perspective to add just go out there and add it and someone's going to pick it up yeah and we were not just an alternate perspective but maybe uh you know saying that okay you saw this in the film but did you know that this director also made this and see how these two films connect so suddenly you've given the reader a uh, another angle that perhaps the re reader hadn't thought of before so if you have to bring more information otherwise what's the point okay i have a question from gunjan who says uh, hi from one south bombay girl to another big <laughs> fan of all your hustling would fc and mommy digital platforms consider releasing films in the absence of theaters you know so uh, um um i i i love that word you know some people don't like the word hustling but that's what we do day in and day out and i am proud of it i'm proud to be somebody who hustles every day and and sort of keeps it going um you know a film companion honestly cannot be releasing films though though i have to flag this off we're starting something called the sunday showcase on on this coming sunday where we're going to host a short film on the platform um just to you know give sort of curate and and show you guys some something lovely uh feature films i don't think we can be in that business because we are reviewers so it would be an immediate conflict of interest for us to also be a exhibitor or in some way a platform that shows films um mommy certainly we can we can look at it right now what we have is the year round program and and you should check that out on the mommy website or mommy social media because it's excellent you know they're bringing the team has curated this excellent um list of films which you can't see anywhere which are unreleased and you have to make a payment of very minimal amount 55 rupees or something like that and you they will send you the link in your mailbox wow. so that i think is is fantastic the problem with becoming an exhibitor is you have to build the tech right you have to have tech that enables you to show a film make sure it doesn't get pirated um, you know you have to have all those things in place which we we don't have right now okay i'm going to take the next question from gayu mi who says 
So, can you tell us your most memorable on and off screen moment with Rishi Kapoor or Irfan Khan? You know, um, uh, I I tell you, it's it's so uh, it's been such a it's been such a difficult week. I mean, we all knew and. all of us within the film industry knew before it became public that both of them were ill they both had cancer um and yet honestly nothing prepared us for this nothing uh, you you can you know somehow you feel and and, uh, and and they both fought so long and so hard and and you just felt that they've got this you know they they're going to be fine we're all going to be fine um it's just it's just very very hard to still wrap my head around this i mean i saw angrezi medium last month sitting next to irfan's wife shutapa and and you know we talked about our kids we talked about covid and you know they were both my my daughter and her son were away at university and it's just i i still am grappling with it in terms of favorite moments you know with 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 rishi sir it was always you were always afraid that he was going to scold you because he was a he he was a grumpy guy okay and he didn't suffer fools easily and he was and a grumpy I, guy really yeah, yeah he was he was he was just lovely and crabby you know the who english mein kehte hain na curmudgeon he was a yeah. curmudgeon and and uh, you know he would say hmm what and <laughs> and i remember actually being he he was intimidating and yet the stories that he told you i remember in one interview i showed him things that he himself had talked about at some point you know a picture of raj kapoor directing him or uh, the family and then he told you these incredible stories of these legends and really kind of spoke with such passion about the craft you know and that's the only way you can keep going for 40 plus years is is if you have that love and irfan was was very uh, Uh, you know very very sort of he had a lot of gravitas he had a, he he was there was a real stillness just a stillness and and he wasn't enamored by his stardom or i think because he had struggled so long i think when you put in those many years in just being noticed as the fantastic actor that he was uh, he, he and he would talk very frankly about how people didn't call him and how he wasn't accepted and 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 then you know i did an interview with him for inferno where where he was sitting next to tom hanks and i was interviewing irfan and tom hanks together wow. and i was like man i'm so proud of you <laughs> you know it's just it was just so lovely it was so lovely to see him so okay thank you for sharing a little bit of those personal tidbits uh next question from usman gafur from pakistan hi ma'am a question from a big fan in pakistan have you ever done any reviews of pakistani films you know uh, um uh i there was a film that uh, oh god i can't believe i'm so so i cannot believe i'm forgetting the name of this the really famous one um uh, 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 uh shit it was a couple of years ago and it released in india and it's an absolutely terrific film um about about sort of extreme um you know uh I cannot believe this this is like you know old age is finally coming to me <laughs> like uh, about the guy who gets then then the hero actually he he goes to the states and 911 happens usman if you can rem- if you know which one i'm talking about please remind me what i'm talking about because i love that movie and i cannot be- they on the aeroplane and 911 sort of happens and yeah, isn't it's not bowl but it's the same director i think who made bowl right. Uh, is it cake? No, no, it's not cake. I know cake is on bowl. Netflix. I haven't seen. Uh, no, it's not. It, but it's the same. Khuda ke liye. Khuda ke liye. That's it. That's it. Uh, um, I remember seeing that. That was an absolutely wonderful movie. And then there's another film, um, which had a female director, which was very good. It was about a woman who's who lives in Pakistan, but who finds out at the end that she's she's uh, Hindu, and and. what happens kiran kher was in that film shohaib mansoor you are you are absolutely right you are absolutely right khuda ke liye but this is another film and cake is on my list to see i have to see uh, i have to see cake because i've heard wonderful things about it okay terrific next question from ruthwick uh, says can you talk about your first interview experience do you remember that <laughs>
you know, I don't, I, I mean, I don't remember the first first, but I, it's so weird. I, there's some things I remember so clearly. Like I remember interviewing Madhuri Dixit on the sets of a film called Raj Kumar. And the sets were at Film City and, and was this very big uh, fantasy movie with Madhuri, Anil, I think, and Nasruddin Shah. And, and, uh, and Madhuri was, and it was weird. And I remember it because that was the first time I noticed how few women there were on a set. So it was literally me and Madhuri and Madhuri's mom and her hairdresser. And we were the four women on this set with 200 people. Uh, you know, so I remember, I remember things like this. Okay, my son has joined and he's, he's, uh, he's making fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, lots of questions here. We have a question from Ipsita who says, how are you keeping yourself disciplined during the lockdown? Um, you know, uh, by following a very, very strict schedule. I think that's the only thing that, uh, so, so it was funny in the first few. So I wake up, I'm a, I'm a morning person. I wake up at 6am and uh, the whole family, you know, my husband was like, what are you doing? And I was like, you know, if I don't do this, um, something in me will, will, the, the energy will, will dissipate. Uh, I have to believe that every day and, and, you know, who knows how long this is going to be? Who knows how long we're going to be in this situation for? So I really, I, I make sure I'm up at six. I exercise every day and I work, I work as much as I did otherwise. It's just, uh, that is what really, I think I'm, I'm a workaholic uh, and that's really what keeps me going. Okay. Thank you. Question from Zorbi says, Ma'am, with the depth and breadth of experience you have, wouldn't you be directing a movie yourself? It's high time. <laughs> no, no, Zorbi. It takes a lot of talent to direct the movie. I don't have it. <laughs> I don't have it. I feel like I'm not a good enough film critic right now. First, pehle wo to seek lo. <laughs> Extremely <laughs> humble and modest. I have a question here from Aditya Dixit, who says, thank you for the session. What's the first step towards a career in film criticism? Also, how do we find out and accept whether we're inclined towards filmmaking or criticism? You know, that's, that's, a, uh, that's a good question. And a lot of people have that, you know, uh, but, and, and there, there are many great filmmakers who are actually film critics. Truffaut was a film critic be before he became a filmmaker. Um, so uh, I think the way to do it is to watch and critique. Just start writing, like genuinely watch anything. And, you know, honestly, guys, we are so privileged now to have so many streaming platforms. And uh, again, you know, my, my, my children call this your childhood poverty stories. They say, oh God, she's starting with the CPS again, where I talk about how we didn't, we had to go to a theater. They have no interest in these stories. But the truth is we are so privileged. You can watch anything. You're spoiled right. for choice. Watch and write, watch and write. And if that experience um, isn't fulfilling, you know, maybe then you want to do more. May then start watching the, the, the U YouTube is inundated with filmmaking videos. Uh, you know, look at that. See, and but, but I'll tell you, uh, these are both very, very tough jobs. They're very tough jobs. Uh, you have to, I, I just saw, you know, Mira Nair did uh, a thing on Twitter. And when somebody asked her, like, what, would, what, what do you advise for filmmakers? And she said, you need to have patience and you need to learn to be lonely. Uh, that's, that's what, and, and, but, but, but I think uh, being a filmmaker is far more harder, far more challenging, far more, um, it'll take, it'll take it out of you and you should do it if you love it because uh, there's no guaranteeing what's at the other end, whether three people will even watch your movie. So that process has to be so exciting that you commit to it. You know, the, I, I think that's the, I, you know, a lot of people say, why don't you direct films? But I don't have the courage to do it. It takes too much, too much spine to put two years into something and then have it fail in one morning. Okay, a question from book uh, says, your most difficult interview or a celebrity who would just wouldn't speak too much in an interview? Have you had a moment like that? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. You know, I remember uh, I did an interview with the M. Night Shyamalan 
and um, you know he had just gone through a, a bit of a rough patch he had had lots and lots of um, and lots and lots matlab char panch film i think or three four films hadn't work and then he did this film and then i did this interview it was called the happening and i i sort of narrated to him a story that i read about him i think in variety or one of the hollywood trade magazines and i said you know but apparently this happened and then you did this and then he turned around and said everything you've just said is untrue wow. <laughs> you know i just took a step back and i'm like oh shit now what do i say you know so <laughs> of course of course there are moments like that where people i just they won't give an inch that happens and you have to just keep going and you know i'm not in my interviews ever trying to bully people or extract some sansani khed khulasa out of them you know the idea is to learn and get insights into them as artists that's all okay i'm just going to read out a comment from fact to 100 who's been sending these comments all the time saying can you just please convey this to ma'am can she get virat sir and anushka sharma on an interview <laughs> together <laughs> i wish i wish i had that kind of power that i could get virat sir and anushka together i i'm so sorry to disappoint you but no i don't think they'll come together for me and the tragedy is that i know nothing about cricket so i would not even know what to ask virat sir maybe agni can help you curate that <laughs> yes. interview yes um, i have a question a lot about malayalam films so from someone called hope catapult What are your favorite Malayalam films and filmmakers? Someone asked earlier, how did you get into Malayalam films? So you know, um, I got into Malayalam films honestly because um, uh, because we we uh, started Film Companion South, and I I started to read and and know more because you know we're covering them, and honestly, I watched a couple, and I can't tell you the level of the artistry and the storytelling. It's just fantastic. I think it's. the best mainstream cinema in this country um and uh, i you know one after the other i i started to kind of watch kumbhalangi nights and then maya nadhi and then uh, bangalore days and ustad hotel and like i can't get enough and there's still so many that i haven't seen the really really good ones uh it's it's fantastic and i urge all of you guys watching please use if you have time now to see movies go on amazon amazon has more uh, um uh, you know um indian cinema from other languages than i think netflix does but go on both of the platforms and find malayalam movies uh, you will be just blown away by the storytelling and it's not esoteric it's not you know quote and quote rt boring it's none of that it's just brilliant storytelling You recommended the care of Kanchanapuram recently, and I watched that thing, and it was just fabulous. Isn't that lovely? I mean, Viva, that film was made in some fifty, seventy lakhs. I mean, can you even imagine? But it's all the narrative, you know. It's all the it's story, all the which is so good. Yeah, and the way it comes together at the end is just is amazing. Fantastic. Thank you for yeah. that recommendation. Thank you. A question from Niti Shahani: Being a fellow movie buff, I'm certain you're missing watching movies in the theaters. How are you coping with this? Yeah. Oh God! Don't get me started. I, you know, a part of me is in mourning uh, because, and I know, I know. Listen, let's let's not be precious about this. Uh, the 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 problems and the difficulties of people that that people are going through are, you know, at another level. I mean, entertainment and cinema and theaters are. are a very very small thing you know there are people struggling for their life and and it's it's horrific um but for us for us whose whole life was about the movies about going into a theater about that even though i don't eat popcorn but that smell you know that that feeling yeah. of being in a dark hall with 200 other people um is just magical it's just magical and um i'm i'm very very concerned about how this is going to play out uh you know um obviously health is of paramount importance we cannot go into theaters unless we know that we are all going to be safe uh and if at the end of this if that takes a year if that takes 18 months you know they are i've read that the that the earliest we'll have a vaccine is 18 months uh how many theaters in india are going to survive this india is one of the most underscreened countries in the world we have like um you know something like of uh, 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 10500 theaters for 1.2 1.3 billion people so mm. if more theaters close you know what is the ripple effect of that so you know i, I i'm a weird uh, kind of hybrid because i'm an insider and an outsider so i'm a 
I'm a journalist and I observe what happens in the film industry, but I'm also an insider and I pray for the film industry and I hope things go well. So it's a very anxious time. And I genuinely miss that experience of being together. You know, you watch something together. You can't, you can't replace that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the Friday, like the Friday, Saturday, Sunday movie watching was an essential part of most people's lives in India. So baked, built into our weekend plan. And it's, it's very yeah. sad that we don't have that anymore. Uh, taking a question here from Neha Bakshi. Do you think if movies like Piyasa and Kagas Ke Fool release today, they do well in our contemporary times? I think so. I, I absolutely think uh, that they would, you know, because I feel like, and I've seen how much the audience has evolved in the last 20 odd years that I've been a reporter. Um, you know, when I started, there was only one kind of Hindi movie. There was only the Masala movie or you had... Uh, the completely, you know, parallel cinema, but by the 90s, parallel cinema had completely kind of faded out. Um, so over the years, the definition of mainstream Hindi cinema has completely changed. I mean, in the same year, you have a war and you have Article 15. And that's brilliant. You know, that's brilliant. So I think the, the audience is way more evolved. Uh, we want different stories. We're willing to look at different things. And these films would have definitely done well. Okay, thank you. Avik Ghosh asks, what is your favorite South Korean film? I'm, I'm a big fan of South Korean movies, hence asking. Yeah, oh my God. South Korean cinema is just fabulous. Uh, I think, um, you know, I've been a big fan of Bong Joon-ho and Park Chan-wook. Uh, though though uh, some of Park Chan-wook cinema is so difficult, it's so violent and gory that I can't handle it. I, I don't do very well with blood on screen. Uh, that's one of my shortcomings as a film critic. Um, but uh, I, I love, I, I think uh, Bong Joon-ho has a more uh, humanist uh, sort of take, you know, and so I love, I love Okja, I love uh, those films that he made, Snowpiercer, all of those movies are just, just wonderful. Okay, question from AB, who says, oh, I, I know you don't really review home films, but he says, what is your favorite BBC film? You can give out a favorite BBC film. Sure, you know, for me, the, the, I, I'll give you two favorites would be uh, Parinda and Shikara. Parinda and Shikara, wow. Yeah, okay. yeah. All right, going to take the question from Mishreen. With so much content being consumed digitally, do you think the rules of the game are changing? Absolutely. Absolutely. The rules of the games are, game are changing as we speak. Um, because, uh, you know, what, what this pandemic will do is the, the rules were changing already. Okay, we were all in this massive contentious conversation about theatrical versus streaming. But what the pandemic has done is it's accelerated that conversation. Um, what happens now? You know, do, do people come back? Or are they all now going to be at the end of this? If this takes 18 months, are we just going to be too happy staying at home? Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. So uh, absolutely, the rules of the game are changing. You know, I never, look at me, uh, I never reviewed digital content just because I didn't have the time. I, I was too immersed in just watching movies. And, and now that's what I'm doing. I'm watching Panjayat. I'm watching Hasmok. I'm watching Four More Shots. Uh, mm. So we are all evolving in ways and we are going to come out of this as very different people. Um, I'm just hoping that that does not mean that we will not want to go into a theater and watch films together again, because that togetherness um, that, you know, sitting with strangers and sharing something is, is very precious. Hmm. It's the whole the, the theatrical experience. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And for anyone who asks what she's watching on Netflix right now, I think she mentioned she's watching Hasmok. She said four more shots. Yeah, Some those are the ones. Those are the ones I, I reviewed. And, and I'm watching, uh, you know, all these movies. I just saw Bangalore Days uh, a week ago, which is on Hotstar, Disney Hotstar. It's fabulous, lovely film. A question from um, Aditya Dixit. How do I study a film? Time again, people keep saying that you've got to watch the same film multiple times. Is there a format that I can follow that you could recommend? So, you know, honestly, um, uh, there, there isn't a format, but there's, you just go on YouTube. There's tons and tons of uh, videos which will break up films for you, you know, which will, uh, which will kind of break up uh, shots and tell you that, look at this. This is how it comes. See, because every frame is finally filled with meaning and everything in that frame has been put there by the director. So finally, 
you're trying to decipher what this director is trying to say to you so i think if you just you don't have to there's no format for it you just have to keep watching and kind of um looking at it but but there are film study courses that you can actually take to kind of uh, you know take this a step further but like i said i'm tragically i've never taken it do you watch the same film many times before you review i think he's asking like do you need to watch the same film i wish times? i could i wish i could i wish i had that luxury but no we we never we are never able to um we do on film companion we do i and another critic named rahul desai we do something called fc retake where we um look at a film we go back and rewatch a film and kind of examine our own responses and see are we are we different yeah are the responses different because the way you react to a film is also says something about who you are at that particular time uh you know so that's something we do but no before a uh, initial review you never have time to watch it again again okay great okay question from mikhail here who says ma'am what are your thoughts on award ceremonies in india and are they biased <laughs> Now Mikhail you're going to get me into trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'll tell you it's a um, honestly I don't think very much of the award ceremonies in India. I don't think um that it's not about bias it's just about a faulty mechanism. I I just don't know how I don't think this they really celebrate artistry. I think it is more about um who are the stars who show up and sit in that front row um you know it's not i mean honestly think about it who won the film fair award last year or who won um, any of the awards that are given out the ifa award you know and these are all great ceremonies they're great fun they're they're lovely to participate in they're lovely to watch uh, but do they make a difference to the career of the actor i don't think so i don't i don't think um in the way that even an oscar nomination makes a difference to the career of an actor because then that goes as part of your oscar nominated actor so and so right. doesn't happen here doesn't happen here because there's not enough rigor in the process there's not enough credibility in the process okay guys you heard her she said there's not enough credibility in the process <laughs> taking a question from josh kruna who says how important of an aspect is music in films according to you both soundtrack and background score and do you plan to review film music okay nice question you know it's uh, it's essential it's essential i mean uh, for us uh, the indian film form the way of storytelling the our narrative is through music um so since you know time immemorial since the the time we started we've told our stories through music um and and it's very very important it's interesting you see i i i wish i knew more so i'm again i'm not technically trained so i can't tell you this is this rag or this is that rag uh, but i can perhaps identify that this music is effective and this is not so effective um but but background music is becoming in fact even more important because increasingly i find directors feeling a little uncomfortable with lip sync songs uh, you know because the movies are becoming more life like they want to be more natural they want to be more realistic and then how does somebody just start singing a song so um, it's but then the song is in the background you know so the characters are doing the narrative continues they're doing what they need to do but the song is in the backdrop so uh, it's very very important and and it adds so much to the cinema experience okay so it is obviously it is it is very important right so obviously yeah, a, yeah. a big part of all our upbringing is listening to the music before the films release a uh, question from parvati prakash i just did the film critic course on film companion what should i do next so parvati i would suggest that uh start watching and start writing open a blog you know also look at readers write on film companion uh so that is we've created something where the readers of film companion it's on our website uh, readers of film companion can write um and and send us their writing and we pick the best uh, material and publish it on the film companion website please try yeah please send send in your uh, uh content for that um also start a blog just start writing sharing you know watch movies share your reviews with your friends family get people to read and see if you're actually helping them are you helping them to make choices are they are they coming back to you saying yaar i never saw it like that thanks for pointing that out you know mm -hmm. just practice it you have to keep practicing it okay guys i'm going to take last three questions i promised for 30 minutes we've gone way beyond time 
question from curls and mockery what are your favorite queer films wow that's a lovely one oh so my one of my favorite favorite love stories is brokeback mountain um i just that you know when i see those two men it just just breaks my heart all over again and i remember when i saw it and i don't know why but i was in the us and i saw it in the states and i remember just sitting in my chair and just like weeping at the end of it um also the same response i had to call me by your name uh it was so funny because i had this entire tray of food in my lap and i was sitting next to anurag kashyap uh, this was part of it was screened as part of the mumbai film festival and at the end of it i couldn't move i just I, i so my head was down and i was crying and so he said here give me the tray and he, he just held that tray while i wept i love i love uh, those movies i also um, really really uh, love fire i haven't seen it for many years but i remember when i saw it in the 90s it was so uh, it was uh, um, very startling for that time and was uh, it was really groundbreaking for that time you know i i don't know how it's uh, how it's aged uh, i haven't seen it for many years now uh, but those it's just fantastic movies and and i hope um, oh and a, and a film i just saw um, the celine skiama film uh, uh, portrait of a lady on fire guys if you haven't seen that just stunning movie about these two women one is an artist and the other one is the woman who she's supposed to paint and then they become friends and they become lovers and what happens just stunning movie and you i think you screen a natalie portman one at the festival this year as well i'm trying to think uh, i don't remember off the top of my head i don't remember the name okay i'm going to take next question from mikhail who says do you think the censor board is caging the creativity and liberty of directors you know um look it's a tough question uh, um and again i'm always told it's not the censor board it's the certification it's the board of certification so they're merely making suggestions but of course we know it's far more than that um i think what's very problematic to me is like the smoking signs um yeah. you know all, all of those things that are in that frame i mean who looks at that and says i'm not going to smoke anymore it's just it's so it's so naive and so um so stupid it's just so stupid i can't believe that they do it destroys the frame for that whole it moment completely you know? completely uh, you know i mean it makes no sense to me um i think that that genuinely it should become a board of certification where look india is is a very complex country it's a country with too many uh, variations of on the education on the literacy levels on on and you know uh, films do have an outsized power here so we do have to have a responsibility there has to be some somebody kind of uh, you know watching just saying that okay but watching and suggesting that okay this may not be appropriate for people under 18 this may be appropriate for people over 18 but to say that you can show this and you can't show this i mean i i remember when lipstick under my burqa spent a year battling the censor board because they couldn't get over the fact that an older woman was pleasuring herself you know i mean i was like really i mean what are we talking about here you know so uh, i think those kind of things are just really kind of stunting for artists and for audiences you know okay, they're finally sorry. they're trying to they they're trying to uh, sanitize what you watch we're adults let us decide which ultimately obviously affects the society we live in overall and yeah has other ripple effects um question from parul why do majority of film reviews not talk about technical expertise like editing you know parul honestly i will say i'm speaking here for myself uh, because a lot many of us just don't know enough uh, you know so so uh, i i i can tell you what my response to a film is i can tell you um, you know perhaps the elements that went into uh, into eliciting that response but if you ask me to like really break down a scene in terms of editing i i won't be able to do it i don't you know i'm i'm in that sense a lay viewer uh, you know so so which is why um, i feel that it's important to for me to keep learning and to keep honing that and learning more and more because i think it will enhance people's enjoyment if they also understood how the craft comes together okay uh thank you for that one question from zubin who says 
how do you feel when the box office collection of a film is diametrically opposite to your review of it <laughs> all the time all, all the time all the time that's why you know this this distributor is lovely man named sham shop he well, you know he uh, used to always tell me ki agar tujhe film pasand nahi hai mujhe pata hit hogi so it was almost <laughs> a good thing to not have you know to to not have me like a movie um but you know look uh, i'll tell you my favorite story about this is is kenneth turin who who is was he's he's recently retired was the film critic at the los angeles times did not like the titanic um and james cameron wrote an open letter to the newspaper saying that um you know how out of touch is this man i mean that was the first billion dollar grossing movie in the world okay and turin said that critics are not applause meters okay we're not here to measure applause that's not our job our job is to watch a film to report back on the quality of that film to defend how we've responded to the film uh, and that's it and then whether it works or doesn't work it's not my business uh, so it happens all the time and it's fine it's absolutely fun okay so like the business of filmmaking is not really your business it's just not at all your... not at all i mean you know i remember one uh, oh my god there was a sex comedy called masti or grand masti one of those two and you know i saw it and i'm i'm not a prude i would be very happy to enjoy and laugh in a sex comedy but this was just really stupid it wasn't funny and so i said that and i was like you know this is just really really terrible cinema and from that uh, they immediately cut to vox pop so people coming out of the theater and they were like we had such a great time we loved this movie and i came mm. off like this nagging auntie like ki kya dekh rahe ho tum log <laughs> so, it happens all the time and it's perfectly fine it happens all the time okay good yeah. honest admission there thank you for that <laughs> okay guys i know there's so many questions here yeah i have to go we are out of time because she's really been generous with her time um last last words you you write for a living i have to give you a open mic <laughs> you know i'll tell you um i, I my my realization uh, is that for all of us for all of us who are privileged enough at a time like this to not have to worry about a roof over our heads or food on the table um i think we should really uh recognize how important art is and and how it's getting us through if we didn't have all of these movies to watch if we didn't have these books to read if we if we didn't have this you know how hard how much harder would would this be uh, so i think really shout out to all the storytellers because uh, they have really uh, they're really like holding our hand at a time like this okay thank you for that and thank you for helping us sift out the best of all of that and bringing it to the fore and as always an absolute delight to talk to you thank, thank you so much thank you viva thank you so pleasure. much thank you, thank okay, you guys for so bye everyone she answered your questions thank you <laughs> bye bye, bye.